All right, so we've set up our very, very basic React infrastructure with some routing. So now I would like to create a register form so we can actually use the register for the... Oh, it's actually still t called test here, <laughs> but this is our register endpoint. We want to, of course, send data like this that the user can enter in a form to the browser from our browser, uh, from our browser to the server from our browser. There we go. So basically, I want to now no longer use Insomnia. I want to implement the input fields and whatever in the browser. All right, so let's go and create a new component. I'm going to put it in a folder called off for all of my authentication components, and we'll create a register component. So React Function Component, RFC, register. And again, I'm not going to use classes. We'll just put it in an empty div. And in there we'll put a, let's say, an H1, uh, a register, a new account. And then we'll put a form below it with an input field. And this will be of the type. So what do we need? Well, we need an email. We need two passwords. So this will be of the type email. So that it's going to do validation for correct email addresses in the browser. And I'm just going to create a placeholder. So we show the text email in that input field. Then we also need two for the passwords. So the type will be password. So it will be just dots that you can see. You can't see the password if you're typing it in. And the placeholder will be pa uh, uh, password. And verify your password. So these are the uh, little placeholder text in the input fields. And then what we need is a button to, of course, register. And the type of this button is going to be submit. So it will trigger the on submit event in the form. Now we'll do that in a moment. Let's just first render this in place of this div with this text if we are on the path slash register. So in my router, when we are on the route with the path slash register, I'm going to import and show my register component. So save that. And as you can see, I'm now on the register page. We have our H1 and we have our form with our stuff here and the button. Not beautifully styled. It's all the default styling, of course, but we don't care about that right now. Styling comes after the, the functionality, in my, my opinion. Um, all right, so... Now, of course, we need to make it functional because right now it's just an empty HTML form that doesn't do anything. So first thing that we need to do is actually capture the values that the user enters in these input fields. And for that, we can use uh, state. So I'm going to create some state of React. Again, I'm not going to explain the basics of React. So state is a very basic thing. You should know already how that works um, when you watch this video. Again, I have a React in 20 minutes video that will explain the basics for you. Or you can, of course, get my Udemy course. I keep saying it, of course, but uh, you can get my Udemy course for a complete guide in how the Murn stack works, including React. Anyway, um, so we have uh, const and we'll say email. And set email is use state. And it will be an empty string because these will hold the values of the input fields, which will hold strings. We also have a password and a set password. And then we have a password verify and the function to set the state the set password verify all empty strings so then in the input fields i'm going to add an on change event detector so whenever we change the value it will run the following function i'm going to create an arrow function that gets the event data from the on change event and then we'll set the email with e.target.value so if you're unfamiliar with this Whenever you change the value in the input field, whenever I change the value by typing or backspacing or copy and pasting, whatever, we run this function, which will grab the event data. So it is data describing this onChange event. Now in that event data, we have a target, which is a uh, reference to the actual HTML element that has triggered the event. So with either target, we know this input field. So then we can just get the value out of there. And we want to set that value as the email. So it will set it in our state. So what I'm also going to do is set the actual value displayed in this value uh, in this input to the actual value of email that how it currently is. So now we completely control with React this uh, email field. So I'm just going to go to my components dev tools. You can install this as a Chrome extension, search for React dev tools. And here you can see the tree of all of your components. And here under this switch and route, we have a register. And you can see our three state, uh, straight strings. So if I just type email here, here, there, there we go. You can see it's just changing. And if I change it here, hello, enter, 
you can see whenever the state changes, we also update the value in our input field. So React is now completely controlling this input field. So we want to do the same for the password. So we'll just copy this. And then we have the set password. Now we don't have to change this because this will now be the idle target for this on change event, which will be this target, this input field. And the value here will be the password. And then we'll just do the set password verify and the value will be password verify. So now all of these input fields are managed by react state. So now the final thing to do is in the on, we need to detect the on submit event, which will happen when we press a button or press enter. And I would like to run a function, which is actually going to be an asynchronous function because we have to make a network request to our server. That takes a bit of time and that happens asynchronously. And I also want this function to grab the event data. Let's actually give it a name. We we'll call it register. I want this register function to grab the event data from the on submit event. Now, the, uh, oh, the, uh, this will be the register function. Now, the reason why I want to grab this event data is because right now, if I enter some stuff in here and I press register, it, uh, ah, so it first was a validation for email addresses. That's fine. So there we go. And if I click register, it refreshes the page. And we don't want that. We want the React to control the values in here. We don't want the browser to set up a query string in the URL, whatever. So um, with this event data now from the onSubmit event, we can literally just say e.preventDefault. And this will cancel the default behavior of reloading the page and setting up a query string with things that we don't want. All right, let's put a try catch block here and catch errors. Now, for now, I'm just going to console.error, the error, if we get an error back. But what we, want, what we would want to do here is create a register data object, which is basically going to be this object, but then with the values of what we entered in our state. So create an uh, object, and I'm just going to paste in the email, password, and the password verify. So this will now create an object with email, password, password, verify, email, password, password, verify, and it will also hold the values in that we have in our state, in these variables here. So now we need to send it to our server. So we need to make an HTTP request. Now we can of course use the fetch function in JavaScript, but I don't like that. Instead what I'm going to do is install another package called Axios, and Axios is a very nice, simple, lightweight library that allows you to make HTTP requests. Maybe it's not that lightweight, it takes a bit of time to install, but it's very simple to use at least. So I'm just going to say um, await Axios, so we auto import that by pressing enter, so it adds the uh, import there. Axios, and then we want to make a POST request. So the syntax is very similar to our express endpoints. We just say axios.post to make a POST request. Then we specify the URL. So it's going to be this. Now right now it's on, of course, on localhost port 5000, but later when we're going to deploy it, of course we need to enter the correct URL in here uh, for the uh, live server. <coughs> um, and then as a second argument, we need to give it the data, which is going to be our registered data object. So this should now work. We should see that we create a new, uh, so the server should now receive this data, handle it, validate it, and everything is correct. It should create a new um, user account. So let's go to our users collection. And we see we have test at Gmail. Let's create a new one. So I'm going to do user at gmail.com or something else, doesn't matter. We don't actually validate the existence of an email address, which is something that you might want to do. I'm just going to use password as my password again. Click register. And let's see, we got an uh, error back. Now I already know which error this is. It's the dreaded course error. So access to the blah, blah, blah request at localhost 5000 slash off slash our server from the origin localhost 3000, our front end has been blocked by the course policy. So it doesn't pass the access control checked. No access control allow origin header is present on the requested resource. Okay, so this is the course error, which you may or may not be familiar with. This is a default behavior that browsers and servers have to not allow you to send requests and get responses from any server, from any frontend. My server needs to allow my frontend to make requests to it. In other words, my server needs to allow localhost 3000 to make requests to my server. 
So luckily, let me go. Let's go back to our server code. Luckily, there is a um, bit of uh, middleware we can install with a JavaScript library. So let's go to our server and our terminal, and we'll do npm i, and the package is literally called course cross origin resource sharing. This is a middleware function that will enable us to allow certain the origins or certain domain names to make requests to the server. Right now, the server is denying anyone except for localhost port 5000 itself, which is not really useful. So let's import or require course. There we go. And then as another middleware, I'm going to say app.use course. So now, whenever we get an incoming request, we run it through course. What course will do, and we can actually um, give course uh, options, I think. There we go. I can set up origin to be an array of origins that I accept. For example, HTTP colon slash slash local host port 3000. So this is now going to allow um, origins or the origin local host 3000 to use the server. Later, when we're going to deploy our app, we want, of course, put the actual domain name of our deployed app in here as well. But you can just have an array of accepted origins. So this should work. Um, I might just have forgotten one other thing, but we'll see that. So let's make the uh, request again. Our server should have restarted. Let's make sure there's no errors. Just save again to make sure we restart. And I'm going to register. And I don't see anything in the uh, console, so that's good. Let's check out our network request. So here was the course error. Now we have a 200 status. And the header says OK. And as you can see, <coughs> excuse me, as you can see, we actually got the set cookie back with it. So if we look in our database and we refresh the users um, collection, we should now say user at Gmail. So yay, we have now allowed our server to accept the request from our front end. Now we have the set cookie here, um, which hopefully has the browser set the cookie. But if we check out the application tab where we can actually see the cookies. So here in the storage cookies, I want to see the cookies, uh, the cookies, no, the cookies stored in localhost 3000 is empty. There's no cookies here. Now the reason for that is that we have to set up some uh, kind of similar stuff with course. We also have to set up um, that we allow cookies to be stored from our server. And uh, we also want to allow our server to send cookies to our front end. We'll do that in the next episode. And then we'll also set up the login page as well.